What's good, everybody? I just want to say welcome to the neighborhood. I don't have a joke or nothing like that. So we're just going to go straight into the intro. And let's let's get to this. I'm excited about this word, though. Listen, it's going to hit today. Intro, intro, intro. Just wanted to send some words of encouragement. Y'all stay focused. Y'all keep working hard. Believe in yourself. Prove everybody that doubts y'all wrong. Show up every day. Stay pure. Keep your heart pure. Stay motivated. Stay inspired. Show love to your people. From Nip Hustle. Sneaker head. The kicks like kicks. You don't want no smoke if you lay out not Christ. Welcome, 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 welcome. I can't say it enough. Um, thank y'all for that have been rocking with me for, for this long. And if you're new, I want to I wanna appreciate you and welcome you here. I'm glad you're here in the neighborhood. I mention the neighborhood a lot because you see my shirt today. I'll get into why. First off, before we get started, I just want y'all to know the reason that my voice sounds like this. I have just, I've just gotten off the cusp of being sick. I didn't have COVID, thank God. It was more of like a cold slash allergy issue. But I'm here, man, and because I'm committed to not only you, but to God and, and, and spreading this gospel. So I, I understand that I sound a little different. I, I can't control it, but I'm, I'm better, so I thank God for that. Let's jump right into the shoes, shall we? I'm, I'm excited about the shoes. Y'all know the box. If you don't know the box, I'm sorry. Here's Ain't that how they do it in the, I don't know. It's, it's a lot I can preach off of this. This one card alone. It says the beauty of imperfection fades to perfection. Whatever, not gonna go there because I am, but I'm not. All right, here we go. It was in the card, but Indigo Blues, let's put these up. Indigo 12s, released August 8th. 2020 retailed in 190. Let's talk about the fabrics first. So of course you see we have this regal blue new buck at the top. We got the pearl white mid sole and mud guard. And then of course it has like this tonal contrasting laces to go with the blue, but it also matches some of the, you know, the blue on the inside of the shoe and on the pull tab here. Sorry, I wear my shoes. So, well I'm not sorry, but, but I wear my shoes. So um, yeah, this is this is the the Indigo 12s. It was supposed to be a new take on the Obsidian 12s. So you know, I guess instead of re-releasing the Obsidian 12s, they decided to release just something kind of similar. Again, the premise of the shoe and the reason that I love this this message on here so much is that it literally says on on the card that with time the depth and fade of the indigo will reveal a unique look to you now i'm not going to preach that right now but i will say that you know that the longer you live on this earth the more we reveal to you about the kind of person that you are the real you the whole premise is to grow to change to evolve and that's the reason that i really really like this shoe, of course, it has the silver eyelet, and then of course the two, three I'm going down the mid. Uh, you know, like I said, it's just a beautiful shoe. It's not the Obsidian's, but you know, I just decided to go ahead and cop it. I literally only wore these once, but when I wore them, I did a photo shoot, and it was a it was a bomb photo shoot. And so, of course, you know, it's white at the bottom, so it's gonna get dirty. I honestly don't want you know the color to fade. And that can kind of say a lot about me as a person. I can be transparent and say that I am the kind of person that, you know, I, I'm all about learning and evolving and, and growing. But when you're accustomed to something and you're used to something and you don't want to let something go and you kind of want to keep it in this tip top shape, you know, it just kind of makes it a little bit, a little bit more difficult to grow and to change and evolve. So all that to say, don't be afraid to, to change and evolve. You might come to find, and I'm talking to myself, you might come to find um, something beautiful to come out of, right? The whole scripture when it comes to beauty for ashes. That's what this shoe signifies to me. So that's the Indigo 12's next shoe we finna do right now. Next up, the old box. Pretty sure y'all know what these are. Uh, the Obsidian 12's. Listen y'all, I I love these shoes. Like, so 
Back in my day, my favorite color was actually blue. That's really all I wore for the longest. I didn't even really own anything red until I pledged Delta. And plus, we had to wear uniforms, and so I just really liked the navy look. It was just real nice. So I used to see these all the time at, you know, at, at school, but my mom, you know, I've already shared the story. She just wouldn't, my mom and grandma just didn't believe in purchasing a shoe for that amount of money. But but I love these shoes. So, so these are the Obsidian 12s. Get a good look at it. These are the originals too. So, you know, like I said, I wear, wear my shoes or whatever. They released in February of 97. A cool fun fact about the Obsidian 12s, the Obsidian 12s was the only Jordan, the only Jordan 12 colorway that Jordan never wore in an actual NBA game. I think it was more so just to, you know, adhere to the, the demand of the people. You have a red shoe, you have the blue games, so that we needed a blue shoe, right? So I just think that it's really cool that this one is actually one of the most coveted 12s, but it's also one of the most slept on 12s, I believe. So I went on the hunt for these and listen, I love these. Like nothing can compare to these these Obsidian 12s. I hope that they re-release them. If they do, I'm definitely gonna get another pair, but they will not compare to the 97s. Like these are legit. Now they re-released a low top version in April of 2004, I wanna say, but they haven't re-released, you know, uh, another, another high top or original Obsidian 12, but man, y'all, like it's just the leather quality for me, the mud guard, it's just, the white laces, and then, you know, the, the Indigo 12s have like this matte silver eyelet or lace loop is what they call it. I like this metallic feel. It's just, it's bomb. And then of course, you know, of course they, down the mid, you have your baby blue or UNC blue or North Carolina blue, however you want to put it. Two, three, one down the middle in the jump man. And of course your 23. And this is actually kind of similar to the color on the Indigo 12, if not the exact one. Let's see. Let's see if it is. I believe it is, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it's, it's very, very similar. You know, maybe this one is a little bit of a lighter blue than this one, but you know. And then of course they have the navy instead of the baby blue on the Obsidian 12s. But but they they tried with the Indigo 12s and I appreciate the effort, but nothing, nothing like these. So I just wanted to bring them out, man. They're just, these are dope. And. They're dope. They're one of my favorite 12. Most people like the flu games, and while the flu games are very, very, very special to me, um, because it's kind of the premise of, of the whole sneakerhead brand anyways, these though, these are just bring back this bit of nostalgia for me that I just, you know, my childhood, I'm not saying it was horrible, but it wasn't just the best. And so stuff like this just kind of brings back that good part of my childhood, just sitting, just looking at my peers play in the playground or, you know, do the little, you know, the little pencils on the table and the beats in the, in the, in the, in the lunchroom. That's what I think about when, when I look at these. And so, man, if I could go back. But Obsidian 12s, everybody, in all of its glory, oh yes, this shoe here uh, is the bomb. You know why I'm here. This is a good segue into the reason that I'm even doing this video. As you can see, I have on the Crenshaw shirt. I really wanted to dedicate this episode to Nipsey Hussle. Nipsey Hussle, unfortunately, passed away on March 31st, 2019. He was shot, killed. He was ultimately set up in front of his own store in California. And so one of Nipsey's favorite sayings was, life is not a sprint, it's a marathon. So I kind of wanted to attribute, you know, my, my favorite blue kicks to Nipsey Hussle in honor of him and the work, the, the immense amount of work that he's done and the impact that he made. I'll be honest with you, I, I didn't even really know much about Nipsey Hussle until about 2017 is when I got put on and man, just, I followed him ever since then. So of course, as we all know, Nipsey Hussle was a part of, he was gang affiliated with the Crips, which is why I chose Navy Blue. And I really took to heart his favorite saying, right? Life is not a sprint, it's a marathon. I'm pretty sure you know where I'm going with this. The scripture for today's episode is going to be Ecclesiastes 9 and 11. Uh, again, 
I saw that under the sun, the race is not given to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, nor bread to the wise, nor riches to the intelligent, nor favor to those with knowledge. But time and chance happen to them all. As we all know, when it comes to um, a sprint, and I, I'm gonna only give I'm gonna, I'm gonna give a couple of, of, of points and then I'll be out of your way because y'all didn't really come here for this. But this is my favorite part, so I'm gonna take my time on this, which is why I rushed through the shoes because the shoes really are secondhand. The reason that that Nipsey um, I always use the term life is not uh, a sprint; it's a marathon. Is because you know you have to take your time, right? You have to sit with whatever it is, this vision or, or this thing that you grapple with that you want to make happen. You have to take your time in making sure that what you're doing is going to last, that what you're doing is going to result in victory. And one of the only ways to do that is to not rush through it, right? If God gives you something, whether it be a project, whether it be a dream, whether it be a desire of yours, whatever it is, whether it be your life, it, it is imperative and it is important that we take the time to just sit and not just sit and do nothing. That's not what I'm saying. What I am saying is take the time and sit with God and, and consult him because there may be some things that you will have to do. There are going to be some things that you're going to have to go through in order to make whatever this dream or this desire um, come to fruition. It's, it's just important that we don't rush this process. Everything is not going to come fast to you. Um, a lot of things really won't. If, if anything, the things that are going to last are going to take time and it's gonna take patience and it's gonna take technique and, and skill and tactics. So, so you won't be able to just rush through and sprint through this thing because you're trying to get to the end. And a lot of times I've ventured to say, we really do uh, make the mistake of rushing through things and, and we, and we want to skip straight to the ending. And, and a lot of times we miss whatever it is we're supposed to get that will equip us for whatever the ending is going to be. So, so don't, don't rush through, right? Don't sprint through. Take the time to take the long route. Sometimes taking the long route can help you to appreciate the scenery. That's the reason that I like to take the streets most of the time instead of the freeway, because I actually enjoy the scenery. I, I, I take the time to consider and to look at God's creation and to look at the things that he's done. I see the trees. Um, I see the sky. I see the birds. The Lord takes care of them. So if he takes care of them, this is scripture. What makes me think he won't take care of me? So I, I actually take the time to, to, to involve myself in the marathon instead of the sprint. I could take the freeway and I could get there a lot faster. But who knows what the Lord is keeping me from? And that goes right into the scripture. In man's thoughts, right? When I say man's, I mean mankind. We have this thought about what success looks like. We have this thought about how things should go. We think that the way we think is the best method and the best way to go about getting to a certain result. But sometimes uh, that's not always the case. Hits the scripture where it says the, the, the race is not given to the swift because we feel like the fastest person is the person who deserves to win. When we don't know what could happen, the fastest person might get a, might get a sprained hamstring. The fastest person might feel dizzy or, or, or their body might shut down mid stride. Um, and so, so we can't always go off a of skill right and so sometimes the race is not given to the swift sometimes the strongest person doesn't always win we know this by the famous story david and goliath clearly goliath was way stronger than david but there was someone stronger than goliath and david put together and so because of that as a result of that david won of course he had you know smooth stones and such but the premise is is that just because you may appear to be stronger doesn't mean that you necessarily deserve to win because strength is not what it's about. It's not about these means. The means is not what brings about the result. It's, it's, it's the Messiah, not the means. And so, so when I was looking at this text, I really struggled with it, y'all. I was, I was struggling because it's the last verse for me um, and not in a good way. Um, I'll be very transparent because it says here, but time and chance happen to them all. 
That didn't make sense to me because how can a God that's so intentional, that created time, that knows time, that knows all and is all and is so sovereign, why would he say that time and chance happened to them all? At first glance, you would assume that what he's saying is time and chance is just gonna happen. And that's how you should live your life. And that's not what he's saying. In fact, what he is saying is typically man thinks that life happens this way with chance and time. In fact, verse 12 actually combines the two and kind of gives a little bit of clarity to what he's saying here. So what he's saying here is that sometimes things happen out of nowhere to us. And so because they happen out of nowhere to us, it's because we're limited in our thinking. We're not sovereign. We're not God. And this is why it's so important to understand that a relationship with Christ is so crucial because a relationship with Christ will actually prevent a lot of these things from happening. And so because we are limited, that's why we need him. That's what he's saying here, that you need God in order for these things, for, 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 the, for the race to not be won by the swift, in order for the battle to not be won by the strong, in order for the wise to not necessarily get the bread or, or in order for the intelligent not necessarily to get the riches is because of people like us. It's because God is a God of the underdog. God is a God of sovereignty. And so because of him, people like me, I just use me. I can't speak for you. People like me have the opportunity to, to win this race. I may not be the strongest, but I know who he is, right? I may not be the fastest, but I know who knows the time, right? I, I, I may not be the most intelligent, but I know someone who's all knowing. So all he's saying here is to just bring it together to say that while chance and time may happen to us, while we may only be limited in this sphere of chance and time, God is not. And he backs it up in verse 12 by saying, because men also know if not his time, because we don't know. We don't know everything. And so because we don't know everything, things will happen that will catch us off guard, but not him, him being Jesus. Last point, and I'll be out of your way and I'll let you enjoy the rest of your time. Hopefully you'll share this video. I really want to point to something really, really important. Do you understand that when it comes to a sprint, it really essentially is every man for himself. Whoever the, sh the fastest person is, is going to win that race. That's the whole premise of sprinting. It essentially is an individualistic uh, race. But a marathon, a marathon is so much more deeper than a sprint. Um, typically when people run marathons, there's this sense of community. There's people rooting you on along the way. And typically the people that you're running against, you don't really look at them as competition in the beginning. You, you pay attention to the people that you're running with. There are people along the way every ever so often that have water for them. Uh, typically people that are in the marathon have people waiting for them at certain stops so that they see them before they get to wherever that destination is. That'll preach too. So within a marathon, it's more of a communal aspect as opposed to a sprint. It's an individual aspect. All I'm trying to say to you is, you can't run this race alone. You can't. No matter how amazing and wonderful and brilliant and, and dope you may think you are, it's going to take people. You need people to get to where you're going. So I just want you to keep that in mind, that while it may feel, you may think it may feel better to do this all by yourself, to be self-made, it really doesn't, man. It's lonely at the top from what I hear. And so what you want to do is you want to make sure that not only are you consulting God and, and, and making sure that he's with you every step of the way, but you also want to make sure that you treat his people well too, because you're going to need them because you need customers, because you need supporters, because you need people to encourage you along the way. I don't care what the strongest person says. We were created for these types of things. We were created to fellowship and to enjoy one another. Um, and, and so I just wanted to leave you with that. Nothing too deep. Hope it was good for you. And that's all I have. 